Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio, here with another RenderMan 23 tutorial, and today we're going to be having a look at how to recreate the Earth in RenderMan. So in the description below, you're going to be able to grab the textures for the planet, as well as uh, maps for clouds and normal maps and that sort of thing. Um, all we need to do is create a, a sphere, and we need to assign a pixel shader to it, which is use the surface shader and we'll just change this to say earth and this one's going to be earth then in the hypershade editor we'll clean that up and grab the hypershade editor here i've got it docked into the tab just for ease of use uh, in this video what we'll do is we will expand that out and we'll grab a pxr texture node saying tab and typing that in to bring that up then we'll run that into the diffuse color and we'll grab our texture. Now mine have already been automatically uh, converted to .txt files. Yours will also be converted once you run these for the first time. So I'm just going to open the .txt. But if you've downloaded these, like I said, link in the description, you'll grab the um, day map for this example. We'll also put a light in the scene and move that into position. And we'll just increase the intensity to 20. Then if we'll render that, you'll see that you get the earth texture on there and that light probably could stand to be a bit brighter and also we'll smooth that just by selecting it and hitting 3 on the keyboard. Um, also you could just apply subdivisions under its um, subdivision surface. Just change that to Camel Clark and then if you want to keep it at the low subdivisions in the viewport you can. Um, and it will still render um, with the tessellation. Um, so I'll increase that light to be like 50 and that should look okay for now. Actually, and I'll move it down because it's not very realistic to have it so high, otherwise the poles would be completely melted. So we've got our texture map on there and that's simple. Um, also in the um, file, uh, in the files that you can download, you also get a um, cloud map. So what we'll do is we'll actually create a Pixar layer um, surface and that will give us all these nodes which aren't very helpful so what I'll do is I'll just remap those like so and reorder them so they make sense and we'll grab our texture that we already applied which is this one here and I'll name this Earth Texture, so it's easy to find. And then I'm just going to plug this into the diffuse color of Pixar Layer 1. And we can select our sphere and assign that um, layer surface to the planet again. And then in Layer 2, we can add in our clouds, which is another Pixar Texture. And we'll call this Earth Clouds. And then same thing. Um, I can just expand those out by hitting 3 on the keyboard if you're new, new to my um, and we'll plug that into the diffuse color 2 and what that will give us at the moment is if we enable layer 1 which it is um, it'll actually basically overwrite the um, it will just be completely covering up the the diffuse map of the land and everything um, we actually also need to add the texture in so I'll just open that now. So I'm just using the clouds file. And if we run that, you'll see there that there's only black underneath the areas where there isn't cloud. So obviously we don't want that. We want to be able to see the earth underneath. So what we want to do is because the clouds are black and white, we want the areas that are white to be visible and the areas that are black to be transparent. And we can use our layer mask in the mixer to define that. So fortunately, because our cloud is black and white, this is fairly easy to do. I'm just going to create a float and uh, that's just a Pixar 2 float, Pixar to float. We'll run the RGB into that and this will just allow us to run the result F into the layer mask. All right, so that's actually added the clouds um, in. Um, so you can see there that there is clouds across the surface and then you can disable them and the clouds go away. Um, however, depending on what you're looking for, 
that could be okay. Um, you may want to move the clouds across the surface. You can actually offset them probably with a um, manifold. So we'll just grab the Pixar manifold and we'll run the results into the manifold of our earth clouds. And then you can just offset the uh, L on the S and it'll move the clouds along. And then you can roll them over the top with the T. So they'll move up and down. So if you're not happy with where they are, you can use that. Um, you can also make them look a little bit more interesting. Um, so if you've looked at some nice space photos and they're using a long lens, um, what you notice is that you can see obviously under the clouds because they're sitting above the earth and um, at the moment they're not really here, they're just flat stuck to the surface. So we can create some separation to make that look a little bit more realistic. What we'll do is we'll keep um, this layer surface assigned to the sphere but we'll disable the cloud layer and we'll actually create a new shader here and a new um, uh, a new sphere. So we'll call this one Earth and then we'll duplicate it Contro uh, Control D and we'll call this one Clouds and in the attribute editor for the um, mesh oh, sorry in the uh, channel box editor um, we'll go to the scale and we'll just change the scale to be 1.01 uh, 1 .01. so it's just fractionally larger and then we will assign a Pixar surface to that and we'll call this one offset clouds and we'll grab our texture that we already have which was the earth clouds and just middle mouse dragging to grab that and run that into the diffuse color so if we render that you're not going to be able to see the earth underneath because um, we don't have an opacity map on this so what we'll do is run the result RGB into a float again and the float into our presence and then if we render that you can see that the clouds are sitting off the surface by point oh one and you can sort of decide on how close or far you want them I think that's probably a little bit far to be honest It'll probably make them a bit closer so I'll grab that clouds and I'll probably half the distance again so we'll make that 1.005 that's a bit better so we're still getting the shadows um, but we're getting a nice offset now to be fair this is not the most um, render efficient way to do it when you use presence you will notice a lot more noise but obviously you can clean that up with denoising um, if we just run an IPR I'll run it so you can see this at this range it's quite noisy but I'll run an actual IPR with denoising on okay so you can see it rendering up here and um, our clouds are still a bit noisy but if we turn on denoising that pretty much cleans it all up so if it's just a still shot very very simple um, with no animation you're not going to have to clean up too much with animation obviously you're going to have to work on that a little bit more but um, it's pretty straightforward now the last thing that we want to work on is some um, atmosphere um, at the moment we don't have atmosphere so everything will be suffocating in the vacuum of space so let's give it some atmosphere to keep all the air inside um, and to do that you could right click here and create a volume sphere um, though we won't be able to um, see our um, transforms in the channel box editor so what I'm actually going to do is select our in, um, our clouds and I'll duplicate that and change it to be called atmosphere and then we will create a Pixar volume by right clicking on the volume thing there and creating that and in the hypershade editor we'll just oh that's already backed out there so we can just select our atmosphere and assign that to it and then we just need to increase the size slightly so this can probably be maybe 1.01 .01. yeah something like that looks good so we get a nice little bit of offset atmosphere around the outside um, I don't have any reference up at the moment so I'm not quite sure how far out that should be um, 
but from memory that looks pretty good and then what you can do is if you're not happy with the um, density of it we can just change the density with um, the diff density float so we can make that 0.5 and it'll make it a lot less dense and then we can also change the diffuse color because the atmosphere has a slight blue tinge to it so we'll just use a blue for example uh, probably not that aqua though something like that and that will just finish up the look of it quite nicely so then when you get these nice offset camera angles where you're getting you know from the backside you actually get this nice glow around your planet and then when you're front on or side on you can sort of see a little bit more of that atmosphere so yeah that's just a very very basic setup to doing the earth um, obviously you could go in and do a lot more to that personally I'd probably want to I'd actually do a fluid sim or something like that for the atmosphere because the density looks a little bit too even and you'd want it to sort of gradiate outwards towards the um, edges um, but I'd probably do that in Houdini rather than Maya because I don't really like Maya's um, fluid sim systems compared to something like Houdini um, I'll leave that for a separate tutorial though because I think this one's getting already a bit long um, so we've done Earth um, I think tomorrow we'll do a separate tutorial for procedural planets so we'll um, generate some interesting textures and land shapes and uh, maybe clouds is how we go um, and, and we'll use Maya again and Renderman so make sure you're subscribed for that don't miss out and make sure you're supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon um, patrons will get access to bonus tutorials uh, for things like this as well as scene files and assets where possible.